I never quite understood that a surfboard could do that. The hairs on the back of my neck go up just thinking about those experiences. I was lucky enough to grow up with a loving and caring family all around me. I had a grandfather who was, who was a farmer and considered himself a steward of the land, someone who really um, was passionate about the environment that he, he was a part of. I had another grandfather who was a carpenter um, and kind of taught me the, the kind of constant pursuit of perfection that you find within the world of making. That was the, the kind of main factor in my decision making. So I went through, through school and I loved just making things with my hands. And I was studying in Plymouth, so I spent most of my free time enjoying surfing, um, falling more and more in love with it and connecting to the ocean. I was getting a bit fed up with the surfboards that I was using and how they broke and felt that as someone who made things out of wood, I might just be able to make something that was stronger um, longer lasting and ultimately I knew it would come from a more sustainable material. So I approached my tutors in going into that final year and they grumbled a good amount when I said I wanted to make some surfboards. They were huffing and puffing, they're like this doesn't fit our marking scheme, what do we do here? And I said well I'm gonna do this because I'm feeling a draw to this that I can't really explain, I can't put into words. But it was through making that first surfboard. I was planing along the rails, I was making the surfboards in, in my bedrooms because there wasn't room in the, the workshop at uni. And I was starting to think about how it was going to feel in the water and what it was going to be like in the ocean to catch waves with it and enjoy that, that kind of intimate connection to the energy in, an o in the ocean. And I couldn't help but start getting really excited. I, this like, anticipation and this, this unknown quantity of, of what it is to make a surfboard that I had a really clear thought at that point that I had to continue to make surfboards. This was one surfboard that really changed my life. I, ha I had to keep doing it. It was the start of something. So I continued to develop the processes and the techniques to work out how to make a surfboard. I was having good conversations on the beach and in the sea with people. We were getting some good interest from some, some craft galleries and stuff. I was really at a point in my life where I felt like maybe this is worth having a go at trying to make a living from the craft. And then a guy called Steve walks through the workshop and he says, James, I love what you're doing. Um, I love the surfboards. I, I love surfing. I love things that are made out of wood. I started kind of rubbing my hands together thinking, oh, this is my first sale. Here we go. And he said, I love them. But what I really want to do is make one myself. I kind of thought to myself, I've spent three years figuring this all out. Am I really going to just lay it all out for somebody else to, to experience? Am I going to teach him everything that I've learned? And I had to kind of stop. I, I had this romantic notion of what it meant to be a maker. Was being a maker actually just being one man dedicated to a craft and completely absorbed in this world of trying to, trying to pursue perfection? Or actually, for me, was sharing it and enjoying the craft with other people actually the way I wanted to go? And the only way I'd find out was by, by saying to Steve, all right, let's do this. Through that process, I saw Steve going through those emotions I felt making my first surfboard. In, in a kind of really um, selfish sense, I get to experience those emotions every time I take someone through the process. And by the end of it, he ended up being able to step back from his surfboard and say, wow, I've, I've made that, that is my surfboard. So he's now gone on to make many more memories with that surfboard. I started to realize those emotions, that experience of what we can do for, I can do for people is something that I have to pursue. So there was the second surfboard that changed my life. From then, I've had, I think, at kind of last count, it was about 125 people through the workshop course. Anybody can come and start on that Monday morning, no matter where they're coming from, no matter what walk of life they've, they've had. And I'll get to the end and they'll have made themselves a beautiful surfboard. We had a father and son, Jude and Justin, come to us. And through the process, you kind of see them spending time together that they may not have kind of done before. I asked them a couple of months ago, through making the boards and then through the life that you've spent, the few years that you've had the boards, what's, has anything changed? Is there any, any impact that it's had? Justin, he sent his email straight back. He was like, yes, completely. It's changed our family. For that week, I spent the most intense time I've spent with my son ever. And I started to see him growing into this beautiful young man. And then it's given us an excuse to go on surf trips together. So we spend, we're just spending more and more time together. And I wonder with objects whether it's actually the making of them that is what we connect to. They experience it in a different way, in something really personal. For the process of making a surfboard, to be able to have the impact on those individuals and on those groups of people and on those families, it, I feel incredibly privileged and lucky to be able to deliver that for people. And like the hairs on the back of my neck go up just thinking about those experiences. And 
I just never quite understood that a surfboard could do that.